So that's all for the principles and configuration of link aggregation. Now let's talk some new concepts. The iStack and the CSS, we will give an overview of iStack and CSS. Both uh, iStack and CSS are the techniques to combine or bundle multiple switches together as a single switch. So the difference is that the iStack means multiple iStack capable switches can be connected with the stacking cable and be and form a logical switch to participate in the data forwarding. So here, multiple iStack capable switch, and they are connected using the stack cable, and then finally be formed into one logical stack. And for CSS, it means the cluster switch system. It means two CSS capable switches can be bundled together using a CSS link and to form a CSS logical switch. So they both combine multiple switches into one logical switch. And the difference is that the CSS can only bundle two switches, but iStack can bundle multiple switches. And typically, the uh, modular switches can support CSS, and the fixed switches can support iStack. Okay, these are the concept of iStack and CSS. Uh, when we use CSS, actually the links between these switches can be aggregated using the link aggregation protocol to form a logical link. So there is one question that why do we need the iStack or CSS? Is there any advantage? Yeah, the answer is definitely yes. So one benefit of iStack and CSS is that compared with multiple physical devices, one logical device can simplify the operation and management and facilitates the management of the data forwarding. Because there is only one uh, logical device, the management is more simpler. And another benefit is that if one physical device fails, then the other device can quickly take over and forward the data and do the control functions. So it can prevent a single point of failure. Okay, so these are the benefits for aggregation of switches. By doing this switch bundle, switch combination, switch aggregation, actually the link should be also aggregated together. And this kind of uh, inter-device link aggregation actually is implemented on a loop-free physical network. So here you can see this is a logical link, this is another logical link, so there will be no loop. So we don't need to use the STP, the spanning tree protocol, to run on it. So it can reduce a lot of information uh, message transfer and the network performance can be improved. And also, by using this link aggregation, all the links in the Ether trunk can be used, so the uh, bandwidth can be improved, and the link usage is 100% instead of a reduced number in the STP. So this is the benefit of iStack and CSS. It can make the management easy, it can make the network more efficient, then what's the application scenario for this iStack and CSS? Actually, there are several typical application scenarios. So first one is that if a single device cannot provide so many interfaces for the computers, for example, if there are uh, 100 PCs, but there are only 50 number of parts in one access switch, then we need to use multiple access switch to provide enough interface. So in this scenario, we will use multiple switch and we will connect to them using the iStack link and to form them as a iStack logical switch. So this is to extend the part quantity. And as some other scenarios, actually we need to extend the bandwidth. For example, between the link layer and aggregation layer, if we only use one link, maybe the upstream data rate 
cannot be large enough for the uplink traffic. So we need to add more links to provide more bandwidth. Okay, to provide this bandwidth, actually we need to aggregate the links together using the Ether trunk. Okay, and another benefit, another application scenario is that if one link cannot provide the reliability, one link may have the single point failure. So we can provide multiple links to enhance the redundancy to improve the reliability. So this is another application scenario. And also the another typical application scenario is that by using the aggregation of the switches, for example, if we combine these two switches together to be a CSS, then they need to use the MSTP multiple spanning tree protocol and VRRP, the virtual router redundancy protocol to prevent the loop problem. But now if we aggregate them together and aggregate the links together, we call it the inter-device link aggregation. Actually, this kind of link aggregation can speed up the network convergence. It will converge quickly and also improve the network reliability. Right. So these are two typical applications for CSS and for in the trunk. So if we look at the recommended architecture of a whole system, actually the architecture will be looked like this. Between the access switch and the PCs, there will be several independent physical link. And then for access switch, they should be aggregated into one stack and others be aggregated into another stack. Which ones are aggregated together? Usually we will aggregate the switches allocated at the same location or at neighboring location to connect to them together. And the logical network architecture actually is more simple and the STP and VRRP will not be required and also this network offers higher reliability, higher uplink bandwidth, and fast convergence. And between the iStack and the iStack access switch and the iStack aggregation switch, we should also use this Ether trunk. So this can be used to connect to the aggregation layer. Okay, and then at the aggregation layer, actually the aggregation switch should set up iStack and use the Ether trunk to connect to the upper uplink and downlink devices, right? So here we use the aggregation, the Ether trunk, and here we also use the Ether trunk. To use the Ether trunk, we can provide more uh, reliable, loop-free networks. And then comes to the core layer, okay? So at the core layer, actually the core routers can be aggregated together using the CSS. So the core switches set up a CSS, and they also use the Ether trunk to connect the uplink and downlink devices to build a highly reliable and loop-free network, right? So you can see that actually the lower one, the access switch and the aggregation switch will use the iStack, and the core switch will use CSS. And between each layer, the Ether trunk will be used. So you can think of it as a single link, single link, single link, single link. So there will be no loop. So there is no STP or VRRP should be used. So the efficiency of the network has been improved and the bandwidth of every link can be explored. Right? Meanwhile, the reliability is also maintained. Okay, so this is the summary of the whole lecture. So first, we talk about the link aggregation. And link aggregation can be divided into two modes. One is the manual mode or static mode. The other is the LACP mode. And if we use the LACP, actually, they can use some small packet or small message to negotiate on the active links. And when the link failure, it can also automatically elect a backup link as the active link to forward the packet to ensure the total bandwidth and changed. 
and the to ensure the sequence of the packet arrival, actually we should use the per flow load balancing instead of the per packet load balancing. And finally, we talk about two techniques. One is iStack, another is CSS. These two stacks are all techniques to combine multiple switches into one logical switch. So these techniques can simplify the network management, network structure, and also improve the network reliability. Okay, that's all for today's lecture. Thank you.